Miles, what's up, brother? Can you hear me all right? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you, man. All right. How's things? How are you feeling these days? Feel pretty good. Yeah, I feel pretty good. I used, I used to see the wife all the time with the pictures of the kids on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, and I just I haven't seen her in I don't know a year. Or so I used to love, oh man, some of those pictures of the kids running around the house and stuff. Oh yeah, she's still going pretty strong with that. I thought. Yeah, what's her name again? Ashley. Ashley. Okay, I'll have to look her up because I was really enjoying that, and then. Well, my Twitter kind of blew up lately, so I don't see the people I want to see as much as I normally would see them, right? So Yeah, no, I, I know what you mean by that. Sometimes the people that you're following, um, well, religiously, pop up at the top, and then <laughs> if you want yeah. to start doing that with more people and whatever else, you know how it goes. Okay, so uh, I've, got, uh, I've got an idea where you want to go with it and stuff like that, so um, how much time you got? I got... Uh, Probably about an hour or so. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, you're me? not with the Phantoms anymore? I'm not, no. Okay. Um, what are you really cranked about NHL-wise or hemp-wise, or what are you frustrated with? What's your, your passions these days, something you want to delve into? Uh, well, I think it's always, you know, I say always. I mean, since I retired, it's been wellness. I mean, yeah. I think typically think, people think of physical wellness, but I think I've been more focused on the mental health component um as we know it's, they're all connected mm -hmm. but uh, i think everyone's so superficial and, and shallow with their approach to, to wellness and they seem to be stuck on the physical body and i think it's obviously mm -hmm. much bigger than that and I, my focus is really just um just helping people change the way they think you know Our personal development starts with thought and i think we're again we're just uh, we're just we're confused and disconnected and i think we just need to reel it in so that's kind of my mission all right, buddy, I'm recording here, and then I've got a Facebook feed going over here, and then I've got another camera going over here with the mics on it, so it's getting a little bit better audio. But this actually, this Zoom call actually works pretty well. So uh, we'll go live on Facebook All right. Uh, in a couple seconds, and then uh, I'll upload the rest to YouTube later. And uh, I wore my hat special for you, but, bro, it's fucking killing my head. <laughs> I shaved my hair all off. Cut well for the summer. I've been bald all summer. I, I absolutely love it. Like I, that. I got as much hair as you do, you know. But <laughs> just uh, man, it's nothing. There's nothing nicer than putting your head on a pillow when it's just cleanly shaved. Right. <laughs> right. So we'll hit this up and then uh, we'll get rolling. Okay. Rolling now. How much you uh, miss Tim Hortons coffee or not at all? <laughs> you know what? I, I've actually gotten away from uh, coffee a little bit. But, uh, oh, yeah? When I do come back to Canada. That is the coffee that I would drink. For I sure. was off it for 20 some odd years. And oh, then, wow. yeah, I went on a little keto fast mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. And man, was it, it was tough. It was tough. Well, I'm, I'm a, I like my bread and butter. I like my toast. I like my carbs. And, uh, Anyways, everyone's been, not everyone, a lot of people have been trying it and have some, you know, I got a little, I don't get out of the chair as much. I mean, my work is right here in my office. You know, I don't, I don't get enough exercise. Right. And uh, so I did the uh, keto and about three days into it, I got the flu. Like I got the keto flu. I had no idea about it, but I really had to try and remedy it in the middle of it. That's actually oh. some. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Hey, eh? yeah, I'm not surprised. No. I think with a lot of these, you know, say fad diets, I mean, they're, whatever you want to call them. I think there's, you know, your balance, your body just needs balance. And I think when you start removing, you know, essential carbohydrates, your body almost goes into shock mode. It's kind of like when people detox, you know, you get sick, right? I mean, it's, uh, you know, your body's pushing out toxins and you get sick. So if you're not prepared for it and you, you know, if you don't have the ability to withstand it, it's hard to, to go through those phases. Um, yeah. I had four diet. days of solid headache. I yeah. had uh, three nights of complete bed sweats. Right. <laughs> and I was just all crampy and just sore. Yeah. I knew I didn't have the flu, but anyways, yeah. it was it was healthy. Uh oh, sorry, it was uh, affected a drop in the weight. It came off like really quickly. Right. Anyways, I, I'm going back to my my coffee story. 
I quit coffee when I started in real estate 25 years ago. I'd have two a day and I just, my pits were soaked and I get right. shaky and dehydrated and run to the bathroom all the time. And, and uh, yeah. anyways, when I was on the keto, I started uh, using, I started out back on coffee and I used, you know, Tim Horton's double double with sweetener. I know sweetener, but it was kind of <laughs> like my treat. Like, I, cause I couldn't eat anything. It was just, it was, uh, I was almost drove me crazy. Oh yeah. Anyway, it, does. I mean, it does drive a lot of people crazy. <laughs> it got me back on the, uh, on the coffee again. So I've been enjoying it. Anyways, Riley Cote, thank you for your time, brother. It's been a few years. I appreciate you, your loyalty and coming on the show. And, uh, we went back to, well, it's been a few years. I was, uh, I was on six ten, I think last time we spoke. So yeah. What's new in the Cote world? Well, uh, you know, I've got a few different irons in the fire. I'm still, uh, you know, pushing hard in the hemp space. I've got a hemp thrive CBD company working on uh, closing out a deal with uh, a local university here in Pennsylvania, Cheney University, and uh, building out an extraction facility on their premises, as well as a soil to oil hemp curriculum. So cultivation, uh, you know, the processing extraction and the marketing and, and formulation of the product. So that's going to be a big one for us. It's going to help uh, build, obviously, the, the the actual extraction facility company brand, but also the Body Check Wellness brand, which is the hemp derived CBD brand, and then um, you know, real estate stuff, but also just want to work on my own personal brand, which is about uh, you know uh, personal growth, spiritual development, mental skills, uh, and it's that's under the brand Cote Culture, which I haven't launched yet officially. Just working on some podcasts, some audio stuff uh, for it. And uh, that's kind of ab about it, but it's, it's keeping me moving. It's keeping me all over the place and uh, you know, things are changing. It's nice to see how, how things have changed since I got into the hemp space and, you know, the healing world and how, you know, it's, it went from like, no one even understood hemp and now everybody is talking about CBD and yeah. praise, you know, and it's a really small amount of time how, uh, how, you know, the perception has shifted and how people are kind of coming around to understanding at least the, the surface level of what cannabis is and hemp is, but uh, nonetheless, it is it is progress, and we'll take take little wins as we get them. But uh, it's been yeah. nice to see. I started Nature's Hemp in two thousand one, and who would have ever thought? I mean, we were talking years ago before industrial hemp was legalized, and that that was my you know I wasn't going for the whole marijuana thing, although that's hugely important as well. But my angle was just industrial hemp. And right. who ever thought the United States of America would legalize weed before industrial cannabis? Like, it just, it's, it blows my mind. And now everyone's talking about CBDs. Well, hell, no one knew what an Omega was in 2001. Right. You know, my mother thought I was crazy. What's this? Blah, blah, blah. And that now it's a buzzword. And I'm so glad. And, you know, I, I wish I had stayed in that space a little longer, but I'm distracted. I'm also in real estate and addicted to talking to guys like you. And, and you know, you never know. Once in a while, somebody will go, hey, that conversation with Kote, that was awesome. It changed my life. Like, I can't not do it because of that, right? But right. Uh, whoever thought that we'd be sitting here, what is it, about five years later, and the world has completely changed, man. Yeah, it really has. And it's unfortunate for Canada because I always thought Canada had the, the, the leg up. You know, they had the industrial hemp program for 25 years, and they were yeah. just growing it for seed and seed oil. So very one-dimensional essentially wasting the rest of the <laughs> of the product but uh then they go full legalization they had this medical cannabis program federally for for I don't know how many years 12 years maybe whatever it was um you know thinking that they're going in the right direction with it but i, I feel like it's just become um an absolute abolishment uh, you know especially when you the cbd is is still sold under the dispensary model and not sold in you know health food stores and you know in the name of wellness which it is I think they're really complicating it, and uh, and unfortunately, uh, the Americans are ahead, and and the Europeans are ahead, and you know probably the Chinese. I mean, uh, Chinese are certainly ahead in the industrial you know uh, side of things, but I tell you what, they're 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 wasting a huge opportunity here, and uh, they better figure it out quickly, otherwise <laughs> everything's going to be sourced outside of Canada if they're not uh, you know too careful. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing how many uh, missed opportunities you have when when things are up and coming in technology or agriculture or whatever it is. And, and I agree with you. We've missed a, missed a shot there now. Um, but I just want to tell some of the people that are watching, uh, Riley Cote is a former Philadelphia Flyer and ex-Phantom uh, as well. You, know, you won the Cup in 2004. My first year, yeah. Yeah. Organization. And, uh, the Calder Cup it was, it was yeah, right? Calder Cup, yeah. And the Phantom's uh, Man of the Year for 06-07. 
Yeah, just like, maybe. <laughs> and the, the Flyers gave you a, an award too. Uh, what was it? Uh, most improved. Oh, Pele. Yeah. Pele Lindbergh uh, uh, trophy. Most improved, was it? Yeah, I guess that's what, uh, <laughs> what, you, what you get when you can't earn any, any of the other awards. <laughs> Would you take some right, skiing classes there. the year before? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I went from uh, zero goals to one goal that year. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Carey Price ain't doing so well these days. You can't, yeah. you can't be too sad to see that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, Brother, tell me uh, about uh, your activism with MS. I know your older sister, Jamie, has it, and you've been really active in that space as well. How does that come together with your, your hemp activism? Well, I think the whole diagnosis of her MS was probably the, the very thing that pushed me over the edge of actually being vocal and actually you know, pursuing this on a, on a grander scale. You know, I, I had a lot of questions when she got her diagnosis, and this was, uh, I mean, geez, She's three years older than I, two years older than I am. You know, this is going back 20 years she was diagnosed with this. So I struggled to, uh, at first just kind of like making some sense of it. You know what I mean? It's like I always, you know, heard that, you know, we don't know what caused it. We don't, we don't, we don't have a cure. You know, all these different diseases. And, you know, it just kind of made me question a lot of things. So I actually picked up a couple books. But the first one being um, a book about uh, natural cures. It was by a guy named uh, Kevin Trudeau. It was, oh, yeah. I mean, you, you know, I think he's, you, know, you, could, you could Google him and you could get a bunch of, you know, question marks. But, you know, the, the, the content of the book resonated with me because it, it just simplified things, right? It was just about, you know, an abundance of, uh, of toxins and a lack of nutrition and environmental poisons and, you know, government and, uh, you know, policies and, you know, profits over pills or profits over people and, and, you know, the pill industry and, you know, all that stuff. So it made a lot of sense for me to, to kind of dive deeper and, um, you know, uh, I started, you know, researching specifically MS and, you know, there was, you know, there's people will probably challenge me on this, but you know, there's some information coming up about, uh, you know, autoimmune disease caused by, um, whether it was, a you know, a, a later vaccination or an abundance of heavy metals, uh, you know, and I think you can correlate a lot of these autoimmune diseases with an abundance of heavy metals that actually sit in your brain, you know, and, uh, so it wound up being like, you know, detoxing the body and, you know, understanding that whole process, you know, kind of like the Gerson therapy, it's, it's, it's the toxicity versus deficiency. And, you know, we're toxic. A lot of the foods we're eating and environments we're in are very toxic and our elimination process can't keep up. So whether it's, you know, number one, number two, or sweating or breathing, you know, we just can't eliminate fast enough. So it accumulates and our, and our, and our bodies are designed to use food. As, as medicine and, and detox and, you know, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, all these, you know, these words that we talk about um, that keep the body balanced, but your body can't keep up, you know, the nutrition can't keep up with the deficiency or the toxicities and we, we get sick, right? So it all, everything I kind of read seemed to be the same thing, whether it was MS, or, you know, cancer and, and the rest of it. So I became extremely passionate about uh, just, just trying to help her from a, you know, nutritional healing component and kind of making her, making her more aware of her environment. And then I started learning about, you know, cannabis as real true medicine. I had a relationship with cannabis you know, previous to this, but I didn't understand it to, to the level I do now. And or even at the time when I started learning about it and how it can help at least manage the, the symptoms of MS, let alone, you know, actually taking a step further and, and getting her some you know, real true deep results. But um, that was really what really put me over the edge on on uh, becoming passionate about that. And then what I realized is essentially all disease is very similar in the sense that it's an abundance of inflammation or it's autoimmune, it's our body's fighting itself and um, always connecting it back to our own daily behaviors, whether it's, you know, starting from nutrition, we eat four or five times a day, most people. So what are you putting in your body and, you know, what are you surrounding yourself with and what are you putting on your body? I mean, I, a lot of diseases go back to, and again, abundance of heavy metals. So whether it's antiperspirants in your armpit, which is, you know, aluminum and whatever else, the makeup world, cosmetic world, you know, a lot of lead, again, a lot of aluminum, a lot of these things that shouldn't be in our, you know, products and, you know, again, get seeping into our skin and then working our way up to the brain. So everything kind of seemed to be, be the same, but different. So I just realized that all the information I'd gathered, whether it was nutritional healing or, you know, cannabis and all this I just realized that they all, they all all were connected and they all need to be talked about because it is a, it is a series of, uh, you know, um, holistic practices and it combined integrated together. It's not just a one size fits all cure all type of uh, model that I'd learned. So, um, 
you know, to answer your question, it was, it, it was uh, my sister's diagnosis that, you know, put me into this world. And then the MS world put me into the, the all things healing, you know what I mean? Because I, if I realized if I could understand this disease, you know, at least enough to understand, you know, the rest of them, um, that they were all very, very, very similar, um, where it was an abundance of toxicity and really, uh, a lack of nutrition and, you know, cleaning up the environment, cleaning up the diet was a good start. And then there's obviously other tools along the way, the cannabis plant, you know, the, the, the fungi kingdom, um, all these other um, miracles that mother nature has provided us. And we've almost failed to, to use for at least the last, uh, you know, 90 years. And I think throughout history, they've been probably banned multiple times as well, because yeah. it's always about uh, taking away resources, controlling resources from people. So it's unfortunate, but, you know, age of information now, we can get the good word out there. We can talk about these things. You know, we can shed some light on experiences and anecdotal stories, which I think in the cannabis space has helped propel, you know, the cannabis movement into legalization or quasi-legalization uh, in some places. So just going to keep, uh, you know, keep, keep this up and keep talking about it because people are catching on. The natural world heals. And, you know, I think we've been misled mm -hmm. systematically, fundamentally. And, uh, you know, the, the, the current model for healing doesn't work. No, it's sick care. They want to keep us sick. There's a lot of money in being sick, right? Yeah, no doubt. And now I had a girlfriend of mine, well, not a girlfriend, a friend of mine that um, she's got MS. And it was right when it was, when she was first diagnosed and it was coming on really strong and she was learning how to deal with it. And then she spent a lot of time overseas, so she couldn't take the hemp oil with her. Okay. But she found, you know, you, you know, I always use the old adage, you know, you heal from the inside out. What you put in is, you know, and that's why it takes several weeks. I don't need to tell you this, but you start taking right. the hemp oil, you're not going to see results right off the bat. It takes a few weeks for it to get out to the skin, to, to your nails, to your hair, to your brain, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, but I was surprised that when I put her in, you know, I, I put everyone in a hemp milk bath if I can, because right. no one's ever tried it. And like, it's, it makes your skin so silky and just the, the scent of that. I, I mean, unbelievable. Anyway, uh, I put her in the tub. She came out and she says, I, for the first time in 18 months, am pain-free. Like, oh. out of the tub, pain-free. And I'm, like, it blew my mind that a topical application, and I'm not, you know, again, it's anecdotal. You know, it was only, you know, one person. But I often tell people, hey, if you're feeling like shit, blend a bunch of it up in the blender with some hot water, throw it in the tub, and you you, you really be surprised. Have you have you, I know we we know we heal from the inside out. So the nutritional end of it, eating the hemp oil, is, is important. But have you heard about a topical pain reliever like just industrial hemp milk? You know. Yeah, uh, huh. I have, and it, you know it, it's it, it's 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 amazing. You know, you look at your skin as the largest organ. I mean, which it is, and uh, um, you know it's a, it's a great vehicle for you know getting anti-inflammatory properties into your body. Um, you know, just that, that full body relaxation and your body heals, you know, quicker when you're, you know, relaxed and healing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and in that mode. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, just with the topicals that, you know, just from, you know, on the hemp derived CBD you know, right. out of it, simple topical in a, you know, in a, in a small area, how much relief people get, um, you know, through the skin, um, you know, in the, the baths, yeah, in a perfect world, you wake up in the morning and start your day off with something like that, you know, a hemp milk bath or, you know, add some essential oils to that. I mean, there's obviously other pieces of mother nature that are, are, are applicable here and, um, you know, turmeric and all these, you know, ginger, all these anti-inflammatories. But I think once we start understanding the human condition as, you know, an abundance of inflammation, which, you know, whether you're dealing with arthritis, disease state, um, just acute injuries, it's all inflammation. So we need to, you know, we need to be um, aware of that and be, you know, uh, on top of it, get ahead of it, you know? So I, you know, I, I always say like, you know, hemp derived CBD is like a multivitamin, like a daily essential. It's like, I'm in, I'm in the best shape of my life right now. And, you know, I, I feel like I still take it to, to stay ahead of it, you know, where I was taking it before, because I was using it as reactive medicine. I was like, I was banged up, you know, the brain, my, my physical body, and it's a great reactive medicine. But once you can kind of reel it in and, 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 and get, you know, back to where you need to be. Now you, you, you continue to use it because we're always fighting inflammation and we're always fighting anxiety. And I look at that as more of the mental health version of inflammation of the physical body, right? It's like, it's, it, it's your body's response to too much or trauma or, or, or whatever else. And the same thing, 
you know, in the mental health side of things is like anxiety is like a red flag for we're not doing it right. You know, we're, we're stressing ourselves out and we need to calm down or we need to, you know, uh, meditate or, you know, bring it in. And, um, you know, so these tools are available for us to keep, you know, the stressors at bay and the inflammation at bay. And this is something that people need to be taking on a daily basis, not just, uh, not just when you become sick or, or become inflamed or, you know, what I mean? or you become mm-hmm. angry. I think we need to get ahead of this stuff so it doesn't manifest itself into disease state. One of my good friends, uh, Brad Sheehan, back in the day, he, uh, well, I was a Green Party guy, and he's like, Jimmy, you need to read this book. It was The Emperor Wears No Clothes. Oh, sure. Jack Herrer, obviously, the, the, the emperor himself. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not. And he is a typical conspiracy theorist guy, right? So <laughs> I said, I'm not reading your conspiracy theory guy. He's like, Jimmy, it's right up your alley. It's green, it's green, it's green. You got to read it. And so there was a lot of, you know, I flipped through it. There's lots of pictures and illustrations. So it's a perfect book for me. Anyways, I took it home and I got through it in like a couple days. And then I, I was just left with, you know, when you see those infomercials with the animals, the WWF or right. you know, kids, you, you know, you're yeah. just like, oh, this is all wrong. Well, that's why I came back to him. I'm like, dude, this is, this is wrong. And it wasn't, this is history. It's not a conspiracy theory. This right. is a conspiracy and it's historical. And I remember his sister, Dana, who's no longer with us. She died of cancer very, way too young, but she, her monthly cycle was murderous. And I, I'm just hearing you when you say staying ahead of it. She'd run out of oil, and a month later she'd call us because she was losing her mind. And we had to tell her, don't run out of it because it wears off slowly. But she always knew that 30 days off it, her period would come, and she was just devastated like the cramping and the pain, the mental stress, yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And oh, yeah. if there's only one thing, women should take this thing just for that alone. And, and maybe it's related to inflammation and what I'm, I'm so grateful. I don't have to deal with that monthly. Well, not quite as bad. Yeah. bad. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was strange that she would say, you know, yeah, sorry, it's been six weeks. I forgot to call you guys and I'm going out of my mind. And then it takes another three or four weeks to get back on the train and start feeling better about it. But yeah, I agree with what you say about uh, staying ahead of the game. So I'm looking at you as kind of an expert these days because I, you know, I've done the research, but it's, it's 20 years for me since I really delved into it. So what do you say to the people? And I got this the other day from a veterinarian. My dad's dog blew out an ACL or an MCL or both. And then it's bilateral. So the other one usually goes too. So boom, she was only a, a year old. She's fully recovered now almost. Um, and uh, the doctor, the vet said, uh, uh, fish oil. I said, Sam. I got jugs of, of hemp oil, forget fish oil. Right. And she went back to the vet and the vet said, yeah, but, and I've heard this argument before that omega three is not immediately available. It needs to be processed by the body. If you give them ha- a fish oil, that uh, DHA or whatever it's called, that omega three is right there. It's available. Your body doesn't have to synthesize it. What, what, do you, what do you say when you come up against that argument or have you ever heard it? I actually have never heard that argument before. Uh, you know, I just always look at hemp seed oil as, uh, is you know, the, a plant-based alternative to fish oil. You know what I mean? There's a reason why people get away from fish oil. A lot of the times they're, they're high in mercury or high in heavy metals and mm. a source, a really clean source. I mean, uh, um, you know, but a lot of people don't really know, you know, what they're doing on that in, in, that, in that world either. But um, I've never heard that argument before. I think there's always, anytime you bring up hemp or cannabis, and they're not educated. They're always they're always going to drag their feet on, on their you know their rebuttal or you know what they really truly feel because I think they're just not well versed enough. And it's in a safe it's a safe argument. It's a safe stance for them to to play it safe and and uh, you know shy away. But um, you know I've always I've always heard and read that you know the you know, the omega three six and nine ratio of hemp seed oil is far superior than most well at least in, in the nut and seed world i'm not sure if you can compare it to you know fish oil but um you know i have never heard that the uh you know hemp oil is not uh, hemp seed oil is not uh, bioavailable or not you know it needs to synthesize differently than a, than a fish oil but you know I, I could be wrong on that but um you know from from what i've learned in my experience with hemp seed oil it's, it's unbelievable. You know what I mean? That was when I started getting into the omega-3 fatty acids and really the nutritional side of things going through the hemp seed. So you know, when I first started you know, ingesting this in 2011, 
uh, a lot of hemp seed oil and a lot of hemp seeds. Obviously, I mean, I just went back to the seed and said, well, why am I supplementing the protein, which is a powder, and then, you know, the oil, which is just strictly an oil. I'm like, why don't I just eat the seed? <laughs> you know what I mean? I get the fiber, you get the, you get the fat, you get the, you know, so I just kind of stopped taking the protein and, and the oil separately and just started, instead of supplementing, just eating whole foods and eating the, you know, the whole seed. So it was just, you know, you know, you read about the digestibility of the, the hemp protein. It seemed to be, you know, topping the, every list I was reading as far as plant-based protein. Um, you know, I was, you know, uh, using a lot of whey protein back in the day and not, very, not very digestible, you know, bloating, gassy, my belly was out to here, you know, and yeah. once you get away from that and it was, you just so trained to think about, you know, quantity, how many grams of protein are you getting? You know, not versus, you know, not the digestibility, how digestible is that protein source? You know, mm. so 10 grams of hemp seeds, as far as superior than 40 grams of whey protein powder, you know yeah, what I mean? Breaks what down really in the body, what breaks down. Yeah. And then you start to be eating the hemp seed, the whole food versus an isolate of dairy. Um, you know, your, your body just receives it in such a positive manner. And then I think, I mean, I could speak gift. for myself. Is, yeah, exactly. Is how gassy I was back in the day. I, I can't <laughs> tell you. It was just, um, it's well, nothing's to... worse than flax seed, man. That stuff just tears my guts up. Does it, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah, it makes so... the life, life for anyone around me absolutely miserable because it coming out doesn't it doesn't do you any favors. Now, are you eating uh, when you do flax seed? Are you grinding? I don't, I don't do it anymore. I usually put it in my power drink, but I used to whole, just whole grind seeds. It up. Yeah. And so I, I, I've uh, I've been told that uh, that you know flax seeds are tough to digest in their whole form that they need to be ground up into like a powder for them to be more bioavailable so maybe maybe that was part of the problem that you know causing some some gassiness there but yeah i mean everyone's different too i mean you know we get these extremist views on like oh you know i'm going vegan and you know i mean i'm, I'm never going to touch an animal protein again and you know they don't understand it enough and they do it you know improperly and, and i think um you know i think with with, with this when you're talking about, you know, true, true health and you have to understand that everyone, everyone's different and everyone has a different GI and some people react differently to different foods, whether they're plant-based or not. You know what I mean? I know a lot of healthy foods um, that people don't react well with and that's just, right. you know, that's just like the individual. Okay. We'll move on to the next healthy food and, and find what works. But you know, we, we can't think that all foods are great for all people. And, and the same thing with, with medicine too. It's, you know, some people just react differently. Some people are on pharmaceutical drugs and you know, the, the, there's a, there's a re reaction with the food or, you know, reaction with the gut flora or whatnot, but everyone's, everyone's different with that. So it's just a little bit of trial and error. I mean, I haven't done a whole lot of flax. So I wouldn't, I, I really couldn't tell you how I respond to that. Um, but I, I, you know, I think I've been able to reel it in enough now to understand what foods resonate well with me and which ones don't, you know I mean? It's just listening to your body. Once you start becoming aware of this stuff, you just realize how you're supposed to feel and how certain foods make you feel. And you know what I mean? And make some correlation and make some choices around those feelings because if we keep eating and it's making us tired or, you know, or it's making our GI crampy and we got to take, if we got to take a tum or something after we've eaten, it's probably the wrong thing or just way too much of it because we, we, don't, we shouldn't have to take over the counter pharmaceuticals or, you know, garbage, yeah. to, you know what I mean? To, to, to help with our digestion, you know what I mean? Or, you know what I mean? Or counteract some of the gas and bloating that we've gotten from the food we ate. Like that's to me, what is it? Beano or whatever it is. Like, it's like, come on. Like that, that's how crazy as a culture we become is that we don't even identify with, our bodies at all as far as what it's telling us you know the red flags like these these symptoms that eventually turn into diseases like if you're constipated well maybe look at your diet what are you eating that's making you constipated or the you know if you're, if you're taking a drug or something you can identify that that's probably the cause of it but if it's food related instead of taking a drug for constipation loosening it up maybe you have to because it's an emergency state now but why don't remove the food that's causing the constipation you know, and I think that's the craziness that I see is like, okay, well, we're just, we'll just keep taking pills to counteract the, the, the poor decisions that we're making. And eventually we're just, you know, we're just constantly making poor decisions with it, you know, mainly with our diet and our drink. And then we're trying to, you know, we're trying to counteract that with, with pharma and, and, and all these outside sources where we just became more, you know, min minimalistic and just uh, recognize these things. We wouldn't have to, we wouldn't have to be on, you know, a, back on the offense to, to, to kind of counteract, mm -hmm. you know, the way your body's responding to your poor behaviors. You know, it's, 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 it's craziness really. 
but I think we became, we've become so accustomed to, to operating like this and we become addicted to a lot of these tools. I say tools. I mean that people think that they're leaning on uh, long term, but you really can't. I mean, sugar, caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, um, you know, and then a lot of these pharmaceutical drugs have very, you know, very highly addictive qualities and properties. So I think uh, we've, we've kind of lost sight of, of who we are and, and how we need to operate and, and what laws we need to follow. And it's the universal laws of energy, right? I mean, we, we, we've just, you know, kind of come off the, come off the, the rails and, um, and, and we're confused, you know, we're looking for answers and we're, we're on social media and everyone's an expert. And, um, you know, we've lost faith in the medical establishment, the people that are actually supposed to be looking out for health. You know, we have a heroin and an opioid crisis and, you know, a mental health crisis, an obesity crisis. Like how can we be, how could we have become so disconnected and how could we be, have gotten it so wrong when, when we're supposed to be following the science and you know what I mean? And these, these super highly intelligent professionals, which in my opinion are just, you know, are just puppets for the corporations to pump out whatever science and whatever they want. Um, unfortunately, you know, mother nature has always done it best. We've tried to recreate that in labs, you know, with highly, uh, highly expensive, uh, patented medicines. And we're sicker than ever. We haven't cured shit. You know, nothing. I think the paradigm shifted a little bit. And uh, Riley, I, I appreciate your comments about, you know, reactionary. I mean, we wait until the symptoms appear and then we take a pill or something to, to get on top of it. When if we're just proactive, you know, by watching our diet or taking supplements. Uh, you know, I tell everyone just take a shot of hemp oil every day. If you, if you, if you can't mix it into something, just shoot it. It doesn't right. taste bad. It's a little oily going down. But and I do find with some people, though, that the first time they take it, they seem to burp it up for a few days. Like it keeps coming back on them like one of those foods that yeah. your body's saying, hey, get get the hell out of here. And just <laughs> stay with it. Stay with it. It only lasts a couple of days. And once you get by that, you know, tasting it all day thing, it can really uh, it can really help you out. But what did you find as far as obstacles? I know you're you know, well connected in the NHL and with your relationship with the Flyers and the Phantoms. And then I know you've done, you've tried to get in there as far as helping guys, talking to guys. What, what did you find as far as, you know, obstacles that you had to overcome because of the stigma of this plant called hemp or cannabis? Well, I think uh, besides the league itself, you know, the, 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 the league is just not ready to, to change its policies yet. You Not know, even I'm, on the industrial hemp as a like oil for a supplement to eat. I mean, if, as, as a food, absolutely. I mean, you can, okay. you can buy a, you know, hemp seed oil, hemp yep. seeds, hemp protein at any health food store in Canada or, and or the U S um, that's been, you know, fair game for however long it's never been a banned substance. So what were you approaching about, about CBDs or CBD and, and or THC? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's now we're getting into like the more of the medicinal side of things right. versus the nutritional yeah. side of things. Yeah. And yeah, Right, and the pain management, anxiety management, sleep management, you know, inflammation management, uh, neuroprotectant. So we're playing a contact sport. We're constantly banging our bodies. So they're uh, still rather see you guys on uh, opioids than cannabis. Well, you know, their drug their, their drug testing policy is still uh, you know in effect. They they test for THC and can't test for CBD. Um, you know, but they haven't been proactive in saying, okay, hey. hey well, here's, here's an alternative. Here's a better, here's a better way. So guys are on their own. So if, it, if you're talking about like the league versus the players, the players, I would say 95% of the players are using some sort of cannabis based product, whether it's CBD alone and, or a combination of THC or, you know, one or the other, I can assure you that, you know, just dry herb back in the day, more than 50% of the guys are smoking. Now you got transdermal patches, topicals, sublinguals, capsules. I mean, you name it, there's products for it. Um, so guys are, are very well versed. There's a lot of money in this game in sports. So, uh, you know, they're more mindful than they've ever been. They spend more money on training and recovery than they ever have. So the players are well versed. They're buying this stuff on their own. It, this needs to come from the league and the teams themselves. In my opinion, it needs to be actually taught and provided for in the locker room. Um, so that needs to come from the league. It means if, 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 as long as you're, you're drug testing for, for THC, that means you're looking at cannabis as, as other performance yeah. answer, which which is not or, or and or an illicit substance schedule one drug, which I guess it's technically still a schedule one drug in the eyes of the U.S. federal government. Um, but I think the cat's out of the bag as far as like 
you know, real true uh, healing plant versus pseudoscience and, and, and reality. So they know the direction it's going. That international border there it complicates things. So like what, you know, now we're traveling with it now, you know, so there's, there's some liability issues there. I think that's really what hangs it up. But as far as, you know, the acceptance from the players, retired players, I mean, they're all in. I mean, they, they can't get enough of it, honestly. Um, it's one of those things. So it's like if the league really wanted to help, and I, and I, I do understand the political component to this. So, like, you know, yeah, Canada's legal, but the U.S. isn't. So it's like, okay, well, where, where do you draw the line? Is like, are you going to you know, fly into the U.S. now and then now, now pick up some cannabis wherever you, you know, like how does that work, yeah. you know? So. Yeah. Um, and how do you tell your players to travel safe with your cannabis products? You know, so <laughs> yeah. in the U.S., if it was just you know, if it was just a sport that stayed in the U.S., you can travel with hemp. So it's really it's no big deal. So, um, and until the U.S. government changes their stance and it gets a little bit more clear on, you know, flying with it, traveling across, you know, that international border, I just don't see how the 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 NHL can actually promote it. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, because that, that that's putting their players in a really you know really bad spots and if something did happen it would be on them and and there's probably some other political underlying issues too as far as like you know alcohol companies and pharma companies controlling you know the, the sponsorships the, yeah. you know what i mean and i'd like to think in two years you watch canopy or one of these big big ones yeah. will will be the title sponsor of the nhl oh we will be sitting there going uh, man. They're, they're, they're just waiting they're just waiting they can't advertise in canada right you can't advertise i i know canopy has a a box or a suite at the, you know, Maple Leaf Gardens and they're, and, and they can't promote it or, you know, advertise it. They're just waiting to flip, flip the switch. They just invested, well, I'd say just, I was in the summertime, you know, you know, $20 million to NHL Alumni Association to study CBD in the brain. Um, they're just hovering. I mean, they're probably not the only one. There's probably about five other big dogs just hovering and waiting to get into pro sports. Um, and, it's a matter of time, you know, again, I say cats out of the bag. It's like, you know, alcohol is, you know, alcohol is outdated. You know, that way of managing pain and emotional pain is outdated. It just rots people. It rots their relationships. It rots their brain. Um, you know, and, and I, I've lived it. I've seen it in the hockey world over and over and over again, the alcoholism and, and, and it, it starts with cannabis prohibition because what else are you going to manage pain with? It's either alcohol or opioids. You I've know, never considered alcohol to be a pain reliever. And, that's you know, what it is. It's, it is a pain reliever. Shot as they take out the bullet type of thing. I mean, I it's pain a, reliever 101. It's, it's yeah. physical pain and it's emotional pain probably more than the, than the, more than the physical. Yeah, it's an, I had a pericarditis last summer and I spent about four days in the hospital. It was pretty much a heart attack, but my heart's in good shape. But when I get out of the hospital, I remember when I started feeling good enough to have a couple beers with my buddy and uh, I was at the house here and I had – not even two beers and I'm up walking, like breaking the yard and my head space is all like, look at me. I haven't felt this good in two weeks, two beers. And I'm up walking around and doing stuff. And, and with, you know, <laughs> I had to pay for it the next day because right. you know, I, would, I wasn't cured, but man, for those six or seven hours there, I felt like it could take on the world. But what's uh, the relationship with CTE? I know a tough guy like you and enforcer, probably had too many smacks in the mouth and fallen on his head a couple times out in the ice. And have you done any work with the guys that are really suffering with that? And what's your connection to them? Yeah. So, you know, CTE can't be diagnosed technically until, until you tell your dad, you dad. So, um, you know, obviously there's symptoms of what could be, I think this whole conversation about CTE fighting in the brain is is somewhat complicated because what I've seen, and I'm I'm an accountable guy, right? I mean, I've been punched in the face thousands of times, been over 250 hockey fights, <laughs> right? Uh, party like a rock star, a lot of booze, a lot of street drugs, and and being honest with this conversation about the brain and brain health, I have to be honest with substance abuse and how it impacts the brain. So if you want to mix in head trauma concussions and, and the whole bit with substance abuse well, you're going to get a messy result right i mean it's it's not going to be good i mean you just mentioned alcohol you didn't feel good the next day well it dehydrates the brain um and staying up late and partying and doing that whole thing is not good for is not good for the brain and then you mix in get punched in the head so I, my point being is i did a, you know i lived it i i did it very very wrong you know um but thankfully i was able to exit the game, you know, at the age of 28, 
because I recognized how bad it was and how bad, you know, how bad, my, you know, my mental health was at the time and, 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 you know, I ended up having an exit strategy. But what I learned when I got out of it was, you know, I dived into this quest of, you know, holism and all the stuff we were talking about earlier. Um, but when I started to learn about the cannabinoids being neuroprotectants and the U S government actually holding a patent on these cannabinoids as neuroprotectants and antioxidants, that's when I knew that this was my mission for life because it was like, okay, well now I have, you know, eight years of experience of being, you know, punched in the face, you know, substance abuse, you know, party animal, the whole bit. And now I can just like exit the game and heal. So that's when I really started to get into cannabis on this, you know, medicinal spiritual level uh, was understanding these cannabinoids as neuroprotectants. So um, once I started learning that, I also learned, you know, psilocybin mushrooms, essentially the same thing, reconnecting neural pathways, you know, helping brain health and, you know, anxiety and substance abuse, alcoholism, um, all these PTSD, all these things that I essentially had, right? So um, between the two of them, um, and I had, and again, both had relationships previous to this with, but again, not understanding the science, not exactly understanding what they were really doing, but now with a new intention, mm. uh, um, using these plant-based and uh, medicines and, and the fungi to, to essentially um, help mitigate some of the damage that it costs and help heal the brain and promote neurogenesis, you know, brain cell growth and just help regain my whole mental health uh, um, back. So uh, both of those tools really was, were, were, were saviors in the sense that now I understood the brain enough that, okay, well, yeah, you can, you can hurt the brain, you could damage the brain, but you can also repair the brain, just like the physical body. Your body wants to heal. Your body is, 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 is an amazing living organism, right? It's just trying to survive. And we are great at auto intoxication. We are great at killing ourselves. I forget who said it, is that we don't die, we kill ourselves. <laughs> that's essentially what happens, right? I mean, wow. accumulation of decisions over your life, like how much poison can your body take? How much alcohol can your body take? How much you know, stress, how many late nights and lack of sleep, how, how much of that can your, your body actually take and then eventually you die or it manifests itself into, into disease. But, you know, again, what I learned from getting punched in the face, you know, for a living was that I could reverse all the damage I had caused. I mean, I, I was accountable. I, I, you know, I admitted, I partied, I did all these things. You know what I mean? I, I need to stop that. First thing I did, first year out of, out of playing hockey, stopped drinking, just drinking water, you know, went mainly plant-based diet, just started to detox, you know, adding nutrition to my body and then using these allies, you know, using cannabinoids more mindfully, you know, getting into the CBD oils, you know, not, not intoxicating. So I wasn't taking that to, to be impaired. I mean, I, I was still, still using THC, but, you know, adding that other, you know, other element, other other dimension of cannabis to my daily regimen. And, you know, psilocybin, I went through, you know, these different phases of, you know, macro dosing and, you know, doing, doing the, the hero's dose, five grams, and just, you know, sitting and listening and, you know, in a micro meditation to micro dosing. Now, I was going to ask you how you ap apply it if, it if it was microdose because, you know, you don't want to be tripping you know, walking around in the world. So, I mean, if you're using it for, for therapy, maybe, yeah, you could do the five gram, uh, you know, sit and meditate to or freak out, watch the, the, the walls melt. But, yeah, I guess <laughs> I don't know much about the microdosing, but, I, you know, I hear microdosing on LSD, actually. And, and there's some Same guys world. on PST, uh, PSTV are getting some really good results. Of yeah, the microdosing. yeah it's, just, it's just enough to, to, to really kind of activate that brain connectivity and, and activity. It's just um, you, almost, you almost feel it. Honestly, um, like with the microdose, what I feel was, uh, you know, like just a sense of clarity, focus, uh, this subtle energy. Um, but then once you cross over that microdose line, I mean, you're talking about, you know, 100 milligrams is a tenth of a gram. So anybody who knows anything about, you know, right. dosing mushrooms, it's like it's really insignificant when you talk about eating mushrooms, but it's enough to activate a tenth that. Of a gram, eh? yeah. I mean, yeah, a tenth of a gram. And that's, you know, uh, it's what I've been, been using mainly. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, they, they both serve their purpose, just like cannabis. I mean, I think, I think if we understood cannabis a little bit more, even, you know, as, as far as microdosing cannabis and, and macrodosing cannabis, I think most people, when they associate, you know, cannabis with a feeling, they, they right away think of like beyond stoned, you know, stone on my, on my, on my, on my, on my back, on my couch. And can't, yeah. Well, it's just like, 
Well, it's intemperance, right? I mean, it's, 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 it's a lack of moderation or a lack of understanding how much your body actually needs. It's just like, you know, people say, well, yeah, the trip, the fan and the turkey made me tired. It's like, well, no, it wasn't, it wasn't the 3000 calories of bread and, and stuff, stuffing and mashed potatoes you ate too. You know what I mean? It's intemperance. So if people understood, you know, microdosing food or microdosing caffeine or microdosing any of this stuff and how much your body actually needs versus always going to the other extreme, which is overdoing it. You know what I mean? We overdo everything. So um, that, that comes with, you know, experience and, and awareness and being in tune with your body because that's the way I view essentially anything I put in my body. You know, is this a micro or is this a macro? You know what I mean? How, how am I going to feel from this? Because um, obviously two different effects. But cannabis is a great case study for this because, you know, uh, two and a half gram edible doesn't sound like much, but highly effective. You know, micro dose. Um, once you get into 10 milligrams, still not that much, but could, could, could end somebody's day. Not, not actually life or death, but end somebody's day in the sense of, <laughs> now we've sacrificed productivity. <laughs> for medicine, you know what I mean? And that's the whole, that, that's the whole key of healing and, and finding, finding the sweet spot with these, with these herbs and, 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 and flowers and, and fungi is, is how can I use this medicine where I don't have to be impaired for five hours or be on my back or you know I mean, I'm where I can actually get up and, and, and be productive and get my stuff done and feel good and you know, communicate with people and commune and all these things. So, um, and it's, res it's respect, right? It's respect to the medicine or the food. Um, because we're trying to get energy out of this. We're trying to get healing out of these things, but they can also work against us. I mean, every, every single thing that is good can also be bad. And that's just a respect for it, right? I mean, you, you, you can actually overdrink water and die. Sure. You know what I mean? It's like you can clearly overeat, overeat food and maybe not die on the spot. I'm sure people have. But, I mean, you can eat yourself to death. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the whole argument of, you know, cannabis, like I think of all the, the things out there, all the tools out there to manage, you know, say, you know, anxiety, inflammation, all these different things. It's got to be the safest. Yes, you can abuse it. You can overconsume it. And if you but green out, you think you're dying. More people have ended up in the uh, hospital right. from edibles than any other drug. <laughs> because yeah. they, know, the old joke, hi, honey, I, I ate one of those cookies. Oh, no, that's not the cookie. You don't eat those yeah. cookies, honey. Uh, uh, well, call me back in an hour or so. Hey, how are you doing? Hi, honey, me, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I'm in the, I'm in the, in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. What do you mean? Oh, I thought I was dying. I'll meet yeah. you there. <laughs> Yeah, you know, sure. I took it one time, and I didn't, have, right? <laughs> I didn't have any respect for it either. Being a lifelong smoker uh, of cannabis, well, not, I mean, since my high school days, and then uh, it, it was the only thing that would make my mother uh, sleep when she was dying of cancer. Yeah, uh, was the cookies uh, that my cousin made out of the you know the butter, and then after she was gone, you know, we had a little, we were having a few friends over one night. And I'm like, yeah, give me one of those cookies. While I was a bunch of drinks in, and oh, yeah. in my mind, I'm like, well, my THC level is, is I'm like, give me a cookie. Cause everyone's saying, oh, those cookies, you know, I'm like, eh, I'll be fine. Right. I ate the thing. And then again, I had the Lenny Kravitz doing the oh, on yeah. carpet. I was on the, on the couch for 45 minutes. I couldn't function and oh, I yeah. a lot. You know, I'm, I'm a seasoned recreational drug user from from way back a lot less now than I used to be especially with the alcohol but I just didn't have any clue and I think this is the problem with a lot of people that try cannabis they get their balls when they're drinking yep they try to smoke and then they end up throwing up because and I always tell people listen give it a chance when you're straight like yeah, I know what this it. thing is all about and I appreciate you talking about macro versus micro because I think when you smoke that that's pro probably a macro because your 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 blood to the capillaries just extract the THC like that, and then you know macro is doing like a whole cookie rather than you know I've, I've talked to a lot of people musicians, she's on on um, on Wall Street they're microdosing psilocybin and, and, yeah. and LSD to be the, on the top of their game. Top, top of the game, game, yeah. It's just like having a bunch of coffees. Silicon it's just Valley, like having yeah. the best day you've ever had. Yeah. You're not torched. You're not, you're not, uh, inebriated. sustainable energy is focus. Exactly. It. I mean, like I said, Silicon Valley, the same thing as the coders, man. And it's like, you're able to dial into your work without distraction focus. You know, most people are so distracted, right? I mean, you got, you got your phones, you got people, blah, 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 you know, all these different things going on 
I think it just helps you, you dial in. But uh, you, you said you, you made a really good point or uh, you want, you know, you, you, you started what I wanted to make a point on was the, the alcohol first and then cannabis, um, you know, you know, say a rookie maneuver. I've done it. I've said I've done it a ton. But uh, um, you gotta be very, very careful if you're drinking first, then consuming cannabis, because that's what happens. You know, whether well, you smoke. I think or it's something it, about the alcohol that lets it go through the brain barrier easily. More yeah, easily. you get you get, you get the spins. People are lining up puking, have really bad experience, and you know, I always say, you know, people people want to say cannabis is the gateway drug, and I, yeah, I say it's the gateway to wellness. It's an exit drug, but to, to me the true gateway drug is alcohol Absolutely, I agree. For, for your exact reason. There is like every stupid thing I've done in my life. Every hard drug I've done always been under the influence of alcohol. It wasn't Even the hard drugs. I don't wake up after doing the hard drugs. If I stay away from the alcohol, well, alcohol usually leads to the hard drugs. But That's even it. if I went crazy on the hard drugs, if I didn't drink, I wake up in the morning. I'm like, wow, do I actually feel normal other than I haven't right. slept in so long or whatever? But yeah. Even add the alcohol to it, it just it, uh, it's a bad combination all the way around. It's tough, man. Yeah, just poor decision making, right? I mean, again, just uh, the decision making is one thing, and then what it's actually doing to your brain and you know and body is a whole nother thing. It's I don't just, think there's uh, another drug, and I, I don't have many that I've ever played around with in high school. And we did the LSD and the mushrooms and stuff like that. I don't play. I actually I did acid a couple of years ago on New Year's just for the hell of it. I had a half hit. And I'm like, ah, I was with a buddy and we took it. And my face the next day was sore from smiling. It was He's exactly, smiling. I've never had a bad trip or whatever, but <laughs> that's, um, yeah. Anyways, I'm rambling now. I can't remember where I was going. Tell us about your new venture, man. And, and what some of the products that you're, you're kicking. I, I still look at the market and I'm not, again, I don't occupy much space in there uh, anymore, but I, I still looking at a, a, a commercial, uh oil that's efa loaded you know like yep. hemp oil is just right out of the seed but then with the addition of cbd now is cbd's regulated down there do you need to or can you just put it on a on a supermarket shelf and have a whole cold pressed hemp oil with cbd in it because i think the cbd what it doesn't have in it naturally is a really nice addition and i think that's uh, it's got to be a marketable product man Hundred percent, yeah. So it's uh, it's it's legal in the U.S. under the Farm Bill. It's not regulated, so the FDA still hasn't uh, you know drawn their line in the sand. So right, you're seeing right now, even before this wild federal West. Farm Bill was signed, is the Wild West. I mean, you're, every health food store, every cafe, any holistic healing center, whether it's a you know a yoga studio to a chiropractor, massage therapist, it's sold everywhere. I think it's just the big dog, the big dog companies that are just playing a little bit safer than, you know, these t the middle tier and smaller companies as far as, you know, putting in their stores like CVS, Walgreens, they've all put it, you know, at least topicals. It's not like that in Canada, man. CBD's no. not being blown up here. No, because that was what I was saying earlier is that they've, they've mismanaged this legalization um, where C the CBD is sold under the dispensary model. So you actually still have to go through that model to buy CBD versus, and again, the U.S., it's sold as a, it's like a health food. It's a supplement. It's well, what like is it, money, you think? Or just ignorance? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> we know it's ignorance. Oh, yeah, it's ignorance. I mean, I think the people that are, you know, regulating this don't understand it enough or they're protecting, you know, the pharma. You know, I think, I think you're going to see in the U.S. it's going to change. I mean, these regulations will come out in the next six months. They were supposed to already come out this fall. Um, it's a challenging one because how do you regulate it? Is it a pharmaceutical? Because... GW Pharmaceuticals owns a patent and has a FDA approved drug for epilepsy. It's a natural CBD, full spectrum CBD product. So it's, it is technically right now um, approved for a drug. So it's not it's synthetic good. though, is it? It's not synthetic, it's 100% oh, okay. natural. Yeah, yeah, it's actually yeah. surprising. Yeah, really. I know they didn't go far. Isolate. Yeah. So it's very surprising, but they but they do um, have an FDA approved drug on the market. So the FDA very well could say, guess what, guys, take everything off the shelves. This is a drug, and they've made statements like that before, where it's like, okay. Um, but then you know you have these food companies, and you know everyone and their brother is, is infused it into something like it's it's. To me, it, it can cover all that. It can be a pharmaceutical, it can be a nutraceutical, or it could be a holistic medicine, and it should be able to be infused in food. You know what I mean? We have to let the, the common man play in this game. 
because the common man is the one that got cannabis legalized in the first place or push, pushed it. It wasn't, it certainly wasn't the corporations lobbying for this. You know what I mean? They were the ones fighting it. Now they want to get into it. Biotech, pharma, alcohol, tobacco, all the big dogs. So um, let's, let's make this a little bit more of a play, you know, even playing field. You know, right now it's, um, it's still, it's unregulated. So the common man is just taking advantage of this, this gray area right now, which they did even previous to the farm bill. But, um, you know, topicals, capsules, I mean, you, you name it, you find the delivery method or you know it, it's, it's, it's out there. I mean, barbecue sauce, cotton candy. I mean, it's, 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 it's actually, it's become disgraceful, honestly. Um, they've exploited something so powerful and, and good. And now, you know, they're taking advantage of naive consumers. It's Slap. like the greenwashing. Everything's going to be. Yeah, green. yeah. CBD on the front of everything. CBD clothes. CBD socks. <laughs> I mean, you name it. But, you know, that's, all, that, that's, how, that's how naive people are. Is like all they know about hemp and cannabis is CBD. They don't understand like the rest of it. <laughs> but but CBD on anything, they'll buy it. And that's, you know, so there needs to be some regulation obviously because right now there's no standard either. I mean, these guys, you know, are probably extracting this in their bathtubs and you know, a lot of these companies and there's no real, real true standard. So there needs to be some regulation, but I'm just concerned of how regulated it's going to be. You know, is it going to be overly red tape like Canada where it's like, okay, well now we legalize it, but only, only if you're one of these certain people that you can profit from this, and it's, you know, politicians and, you know, law enforcement and all these different people coming out of the woodworks that are, are, are trying, to, trying to get their cake. Um, so we'll see where it goes. But as it stands right now, I mean, you can walk in any health food store, any convenience store, you'll find some, some version of a CBD product. Can't guarantee it's going to be good, but, you know, right. you have to figure that out on your own. And that's the challenge of unregulated, uh, you know territories yeah wild wild west anyways uh just expand on your products a little bit more and then just on the way out i want to respect your time i want to get uh, your take on the current state of the nhl though but tell us about body check and uh, athletes for care and everything else you're working on sure yeah uh, body check wellness is a hemp derived cbd company um, everything is grown and processed in boulder colorado currently uh, organically grown uh, soil is nutrient rich processing is uh, super critical co2 extraction High quality product. We just wanted to put together um, a high quality product um, that would compete against any of the, the people that are actually doing this the right way. So uh, what we've seen there was a just a lot of snake oil in the marketplace. Just a lot of people just uh, again just very very well marketed companies putting nicely flashy CBD labels all over the place. And uh, we wanted to to do it right and do something that actually worked. And, um, and that's what we did. So we got uh, oils, the tinctures. Uh, it's a sublingual underneath the tongue capsules and topicals and you know one of the unique uh, uh, products that we do have is a capsule it's 10 milligrams of full spectrum cbd oil uh, as well as a blend of six different medicinal mushrooms uh, all legal uh, no psilocybin in there oh, really? <laughs> but, all, but all positive for the brain oh, and immunity and, and energy so lion's mane i don't know if you're familiar with it or not but uh, you know really good for for the brain and focus and clarity and uh it, you know, a chaga reishi, good for immunity, um, and um, it's cordyceps, good for energy. So it's this kind of combination of, of you know, CBD, which helps you know calm the nervous system and brings you know that, you know that uh, the overall will, feeling of just uh, you know well being, and then the added value of the uh, you know the focus, clarity, and immunity boosting properties of the mushroom. So just uh, you know, just trying to stay progressive with this whole movement because as you know like again like cbd i make the analogy all the time cbd is like vitamin c to the orange it's just one compound in this plant and we've become so shallow in our thinking that we just like right away it's like woo, everything all in on cbd you know it's like okay well it's a great compound but you know there's more to it yeah where it comes to yeah so just Is uh, Hogan picked up on it with on it do you know He's, he's, I'm not sure if on it has a CBD product yet. I'm sure they're right around the corner. He just actually endorsed a CBD drink the other day. I'm trying to blank what it's called, but uh, yeah, those guys are you know those guys are ahead of the curve with all that stuff too. So it's a, you gotta touch his guy, his booking agent there, Matt, up and get you on the show, man. That's like I, I love. I would love that conversation because I feel like you know I mean I listen to him all the time, but I feel like yeah, you know, his philosophies are very in line with mine, yeah. pretty much top to bottom. Cool. Sure. Talk to us a little bit about the NHL on the way out. What do you see in these days? What's, uh, well, I mean, last time we talked, I'm, I'm not a huge Petman fan. I don't, I know you, you're a big fan, but, uh, <laughs> 
What uh, what's uh, what do you what do you uh, see in these days in the NHL, the current state? You know, it's it's changed so much since I retired, and it hasn't been that long. 2011. Um, there has to be this middle ground of, you know, the broad street bullies and this new age NHL. I think you know the game itself has become very soft. And uh, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, yeah, we need fighting. We need this barbaric behavior. But, I mean, uh, I just it's feel like it's settled a bunch of disputes, disputes rather than spearing, right? Yeah. I mean, to, to me, it's, it's, it's uh, it, the fighting and the accountability has always removed this, this cheap play, right? Whether it's it work. It's the code. And now yeah. it doesn't seem like there is a code. Exactly. It's just like, it's, it's self-policing and accountability is a powerful thing, especially when you got someone on the other bench that, you know, will put a fist through your mouth if you, if you act a certain way, you know what I mean? And, and fear um, is powerful, right? I mean, not that the game needs to be about that, but you see a lot of guys running around now and acting like King Kong and there's no accountability. And it was like, okay, we'll just go hide behind the refs. Let's go on the power play. And, um, you know, so I, I just think it's bred a lot of disrespect in the game. So for that reason, I, I'm not loving it. I think the attitude for some of these younger guys, it's, you know, it's, I don't know, we call them millennials or, you know, what, what the next generation's called, but, you know, softer, softer, you know, generation, uh, the entitlement, you know, I coached, you know, pro sports, not even two years ago. And the entitlement of some of these guys, they're just like, okay, well, I'm drafted now now give me a spot in the flyers or give me a spot you know it's like well no you're, you've only earned your draft position now you got to earn a spot in an organization so it's you know the work has just really begun and um you know from that perspective i just i just think the way we think has become so soft let you know just again no accountability no one wants to no one wants to own up and and, and be responsible i think uh and you see it trickle down into just the you know the, the current affairs of the NHL. It's like we're going on witch hunts to, to take down people. Um, you know, where I think of all the sports. I mean, hockey's got to be up there as far you know as far as one of the you know. There's always flaws in everything, but it's got to be one of the you know the best cultures um, in team sports. But yeah, it certainly got its flaws, and there's a lot to be fixed. But uh, you know, to go and, you know, t to tear it up and go after everybody. I, I think they just need help. You know what I mean? I think people just need help, but there's, there's a lot more good coaches than bad coaches. And there's a lot more, you know, positive, positive stuff coming out of hockey than negative coming out of hockey. But, um, you know, sports and hockey just mimics what's going outside going on outside of the, uh, out of the locker room. It's, good point, yeah. you know, it's, whether you're talking about, um, you know, injustices and abuse or substance abuse and, or just, you know, it's a microcosm, yeah. the design of, you know, politics and structure, like <laughs> that's just, you know, hockey is just a microcosm of society. So yeah, sure. what you see in society and see in hockey, but I think, you know, the overall culture and, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's more good people in the game than there is bad, you know, versus a lot of different jobs and, you know, and, um, in organizations outside of sports that, you know, you probably have a lot more a holes and, um, you know, and abuse going on than, than, than that. So it's, um, it, you know, I think it's, just, it's always evolving, right. It's always been evolving. I think, I think you just got to find a happy medium with some of these, you know, these extreme views that, you know, I think media is responsible for a lot of this and there's probably, you know, insurance. I'm not even sure where a lot of this pressure is coming from, but um, I feel like we're so, so we're so quick to jump on whatever the new opinion is of the week. You know what I mean? Cause it's easy to jump on and yeah, we take out a hot, you know, if you want to take out concussions to take out fighting. Well, yeah, it seems like, you know, a simple truth, but what they don't tell you and you can't really quantify is what fighting does to the, you know, to, to the psyche to, to bring in peace and accountability. You know what I mean? It's you can't quantify that, but, well, you take out fighting, okay, well, we'll remove 4% of the concussions. Well, you still got, 20, you got, still got 96% of the concussions still in the game. The game's faster than ever. The guys are bigger, faster, stronger than ever. So you need to be able to protect your players and hold them up a little bit and slow them down and, um, and have that beef on the other side where it's like, okay, well, guess what? If something does happen, well, I can go at least self-police it, and maybe that won't happen again. But, you know, if you're going to leave it up to the refs, it's just like, okay, well, you can't defend yourself. Um, in, in the real world, you can't have a firearm. You can't defend yourself, but we'll just wait. Just wait till the police get there. They'll save you. You know, it's like, you know, it's just like this, these irrational ways of thinking in certain situations. Like, oh yeah, if someone's beating on you or, you know, doing this, just, just, 
just wait for the refs and go on the power play. Well, it's like something to be said about defending yourself, right? I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not pushing violence, but like when you go so far on the other side, it just opens up real, you know, true non-tough guys to becoming a tough guy because there's no, no true tough guy, <laughs> you know? So that, again, that psyche is, is powerful one. I mean, I remember playing games where, oh, I'm planning on playing against Donald Brashear in the Washington Capitals. Oh, Brashear's not playing. He's hurt. Well, guess what? I can go run around like in a bigger jackass out there because I don't have to fight the biggest, bad, baddest dude in the league, you know, versus, okay, well, now he's in the, you know, he's in the lineup. I may as well, I might have to be careful with what I do because I don't want him to grab me in a, you know, a vulnerable position. So, you know, that psyche, you know, I think the, 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 the psyche has just evolved into – we're, we're just we're like you're nerfing the world and bubble wrapping everything and be cautious of what we say and you know how we you know we, we do and there's a fine line don't get me wrong i mean abuse is abuse and physical abuse is a physical abuse and um but you know something to be said about someone telling you exactly how it is and not holding back you know what i mean mm-hmm. not sugarcoating shit and being honest with you i think being honest is the best thing we can do for our youth but you know but where's the line now of like being honest and now being abusive? I think that's where, um, you know, it, it, it gets, it gets gray and it's uh, up for interpretation. You know, some people are softer. Be like, if someone told you, wow, you're, you had a brutal game and you played like a pansy, like, you know, that could be taken as abuse and crossing that line where I think that's, no, I think that's, that's positive. You're just hundred percent truthful. You know, that's what I, from a coach, that's what I want to hear. You know, I want a coach that's honest with me. It's actually talking to me. Um, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, but you know, again, there's a, there's there's a fine line there of it now we're crossing over into abuse. But I think we just become so soft, and and it's it's easy to oh, it's about the kids, you know, it's about the kids, and it, it is absolutely we got to protect them, we got we got we got to create a better future for them. But well, this is the type of athlete we bring up when we give participation ribbons for that's it. everything. You know, there's no true champions anymore. Everyone's a winner. You're just fine the way you are. Riley, I really appreciate your time. I want to cut you loose because we respect your time. We're running a little long here. Who do you, right. who do you still t- stay in touch with from the old, the old days in hockey? Who's some of your boys that you're still uh, chummy with? Yeah, I stay in touch with uh, Dan Carcillo, uh, Jeff Carter, uh, Scott Hart. Guys used to fight? Yeah, guys used to fight. Um, I, my old roommate, Grant McNeil. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's a few guys online, maybe Trevor Gillies and, and um, you know, you know, Scott Parker and these guys, you know, they're, um, they're in and around online. We're always, uh, t- you know, firing off comments, stuff like that. But uh, Car- Carcillo is probably you know, Todd Fedorik, some other guys I see around, you know, the Flyers, uh, you know, Flyers games, the alumni guys. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's hard to keep up in, in, with everybody, you know. You got your life. Yeah. I mean, I got so many people I would love to constantly be in contact with, but you just know how it is. It's just uh, it's nearly impossible. I'm going to go put Ashley on my notification list so I see her tweets from now on, man. I missed the – this. I think the last video I saw was uh, you, I don't know, sitting in the living room and, the, I don't know, playing a trick on one of the kids coming in. I just – I retweeted that. I just love that video. But uh, just on the way out, give me a good sound bite about uh, Coach Cherry Graves. What do, <laughs> what, do you think? what do you think of the whole takedown of Ron McClain kind of – throwing them under the bus and this whole cancel culture and politically correctness. And all that. Yeah. You know, I, I know think, you're not usually that political, but I couldn't, yeah, right? I couldn't have you on without asking you about grapes. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, Don Cherry probably should have been fired a long time ago, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I, I think he, he, you know, he brings a, a value of entertainment to hockey night in Canada, but you know, you listen to the guy talk and he's clearly disconnected with the, you know, the present. So um, yeah. I love him. I grew up watching him, but I think <laughs> other candidates for that position, in, in, you know, in, in 2019, um, the comment that got him fired essentially is he's he said way worse. You know what I mean? It's like, he, I didn't think it was that, that bad. No, it was just a, it was just a like, mumbled speech and a bad choice of words. I mean, yeah, exactly. but that's what happens when the red lights. I think yeah, when the red lights on, it, things come out differently. I mean, it's, yeah, it's it's under exactly. Pressure. And uh, you know, he, and you know, in his defense, he ha- he did have a point. Um, it's just again, it's it's the culture that just can't accept it. He's like, well, you just got to say it a different way. Well, it, it was just it was just him telling people to to, to respect a little, show a little more respect is basically what I got out of it, but. You know, he has his way of delivering things. He always has. He's always, you know, rode that line, crossed over it many times. 
Um, and that was just the straw that you know, broke the camel's back. But I mean, I think, you know, I, th- I think clearly there's a disconnect with, with, you know, with his view of hockey and pr- probably politics and other things that, you know, um, than, 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 than many. And I think, you know, I think there's a ton of guys that could take that job. Uh, you know, obviously he's the face of uh, Hockey Night in Canada, but, you know, you got to have someone that's a little bit more, you know, educated, you know what I mean? Especially, you know, it's like, cause I, I, I have to turn them off sometimes because it's just like, come on, man. Like, really? Like, is that how you see it? Or that, that's how you're going to say it? Um, but, you know, people just think it's funny or it's comical or, you know, there's probably a ton of Canadians that actually believe what he's saying, unfortunately, <laughs> you know. But uh, I think most of the people in the hockey world are just kind of shake their head at a lot of the stuff he's saying. And even though he was an icon or, and still is, um, you got to move on. You know what I mean? It's like that's part of this evolution is just like bringing in, you know, younger voices, more connected voices, people that actually understand it, the modern game a little bit more. And, you know, the modern mentality a little bit more, you know, not to soften it up that much, but, you know, you know, Ron McLean seems like a pretty, you know, grounded guy that's been, you know, listening to this, 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 this rubbish for years and years and years and just, you know, shaking his head and, and the way, you know, the way he's looking, um, you know, on, on TV is the way most people are thinking at home, you know, in the way I know, certainly the way I, I'm thinking half the time and feeling so, um, cool, man. it was a long time coming, but my battery's dying too. Yeah, it was my ass. My own. Uh, um, brother, thank you so much for the time. I'll, uh, touch you up soon. Uh, just, uh, Oh, hemp, uh, hemp hills music festival. Are you still putting that on? I am. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, we moved it from Philly this year to New Jersey, right over the, right over the water, over the bridge, because they, they actually knocked down the, the venue that was uh, hosting the Hemp Hills Music Festival and they turned it into a, basically a series of condos. So we had to shift uh, states, the okay. live venue and everything, but yeah, still doing that and then uh, doing some stuff with hockey and hemp heels stuff, hemp heels hockey. So just, uh, you know, teaching the youth about hemp seeds and the nutrition and, you know, CBD recovery, all that stuff. So awesome. all good stuff. All right, brother. I appreciate your time. I love you lots. And uh, say, so give my best to the wife and uh, I look forward to see some more videos of those uh, kids. Of yours. Running around. <laughs> You're all looking right. great, man. I appreciate the time and uh, we'll catch up soon. Thank you. Thanks. Brother. Have a good right. day. Take care. That was Riley Cote, if you need him, former tough guy for the Philadelphia.